his face, let me all his beauty trace, show the glorious truths to me, which are only known to thee. Holy Spirit, how divine, cleanse this guilty heart of mine, in thy mercy his bondage set me free. Holy Spirit, joy divine, cheer the saddened heart of mine. Yield a sacred set of peace, let it and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. <clears throat> if you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore we are fear. <clears throat> Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. And that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you. And for His sake, He forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, for He has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts. And with my song I give thanks to him. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Oh, save your people and bless your heritage. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. Glory be to, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. Have 
mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Were you in power our seated at God's right hand on high? For you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, your Son Jesus triumphed over the prince of demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us to always do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Genesis, the third chapter. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. <clears throat> I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. <clears throat> o Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians, the 4th and 5th chapters. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, 
but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent which is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Mark, the third chapter. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He's out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is p possessed by Beelzebul. And by the prince of demons, he casts out the demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then, indeed, he may plunder his house. Truly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my, brother, my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, we now confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Maybe seated for the hymn.
unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I think it's a pretty sure thing that we all like to hear stories about people overcoming huge problems and finding success. The team that's down by a seemingly insurmountable deficit but then stages a miraculous comeback to win in the end. Or the person who is down on their luck. Maybe they're even homeless. And they manage to claw themselves out of poverty and become wealthy. Or maybe it's someone who has been told that they have a condition that is terminal. And that they only have a short time to live. But who then, against all odds, is healed and goes on to live a long and healthy life. These are the things of which dreams are made. And we know that these things do actually happen. And so we are able to find hope when times are dark. We use the phrase reversal of fortunes to describe these kinds of events. The thing is, while we focus on these positive reversals, Changes in fortune are just as likely to be negative, aren't they? Some people lose everything. Good health can be swept away in an instant by accident or disease. Financial losses can loom suddenly. For every team that mounts an amazing comeback, they're always is another, the team on the other side that loses that huge lead and tastes defeat. Adam and Eve, well, they had it good, didn't they? In fact, they had everything and it was all perfect. They looked at everything that God had given them and they saw it as proof of their importance. They thought they were invincible. They should have been satisfied. But sadly, they were not. They looked around at Eden and saw one thing that they lacked. They were used to walking and talking to God and they knew that they were different from Him. And the serpent took advantage of their thoughts and he egged them on. Did God really say? No, of course not. God told you not to eat the fruit because He knows that when you do, then and only then, you will finally be like Him. In other words, Adam and Eve believed that they could be more than they were. More than what God had made them. We must admit that we are a lot like that. God is the giver of all things and He gives in great abundance. As Luther reminds us in the small catechism, God provides us with everything we need to support this body and life. And yet, like Adam and Eve, we often see only what we lack. There's always something else to acquire. If what we have is nice, well then, surely more will be better. Whatever it might be, there's always something bigger and better stronger or newer that catches our eye. Now, in and of itself, there's really nothing wrong with wanting something that we don't have. Sometimes we really do need that new car or a bigger place to live. 
Where we go astray is when we think that it will bring some sort of increased status for ourselves. Or when we think that when we finally have that thing, whatever it is, then we will be satisfied. It never happens, does it? The things we have, the place we live, the people we know, these don't make us important. They don't have that power. And while they might satisfy us for a while, they cannot possibly fill the empty space inside of us. That hole is far too deep and wide to be topped up with any earthly things. The hole is spiritual, and it can only be filled with heavenly things. Adam and Eve were the pinnacle of God's creation. They, and only they, were created in God's image and likeness. Everything that God created was intended as a blessing for them. The earth and all that is in it, every creature that swims in the sea or walks on the earth, was given by God. And then there are the seasons and the weather, the rain that falls and waters the earth, these were given so that the land might be fruitful, so that Adam and Eve would lack nothing. Even intangible things like marriage and family, language, even headship over the other creatures, all of these were God's gifts. How could anyone possibly be unsatisfied with God's blessings? And yet Adam and Eve were not happy. They wanted to be like God, so they turned away from God and His gifts and turned instead to self-absorption. They gave free rein to their desires, and in the process they lost everything. It was a great reversal of fortune. Not only did Adam and Eve lose everything dear to them, their loss is also our loss. They were created in God's image, but that image has been lost. No longer could Adam and Eve walk with God and talk to Him face to face, and their inability has been passed on to us. Our relationship with God is broken. By nature, we have no desire for Him. Our relationships with each other are broken too. Adam blamed Eve for what had happened. We like to cast blame too whenever something is not to our liking. Even our relationship with ourselves is broken, leading to confusion and denial about who we are. Well, the good news is that God did not abandon Adam and Eve. He cast them out of the Garden of Eden but that was actually a blessing because it meant they could not eat of the tree of life and therefore live forever in their sins. And when God cursed the serpent, He said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. What was a curse upon Satan was also a gospel promise to Adam and Eve. And to us. The seed of the woman will undo the curse. The great reversal of fortunes that came as a result of Adam and Eve's failure. It will itself be reversed. The reversal that God promised Adam and Eve has come in the final once and for all victory of God's Son. The one who deceived Adam and Eve and brought death into the world has been overthrown by the author of life itself. In Christ, our relationship with God is restored. For our sake, God made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Our fortunes have been reversed. We who were condemned because of our sin have been made new. Death has been swallowed up in victory. What a joyful thing it is to know that in Christ we are free. 
In the seed of the woman we are forgiven. In the seed of the woman we have life to the fullest. In the seed of the woman we are restored and renewed. As St. Paul writes, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to Himself. We who are selfish, we who look only to our advantage, we who are always striving for status or power, who constantly search for more and more, we are now free in Christ to look after our neighbor. And how can we not? Our fortunes have been reversed and we are abundantly rich in Christ. We are free to share our new life in Christ with the world. As St. Paul writes to us today, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we also speak. In bold and confident faith, we go out as God's redeemed to spread the gospel of forgiveness in Christ to a needy and starving world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we all like a good story where the underdog rises to triumph over adversity. We like watching as a team makes a great comeback. We like hearing about someone overcoming a terminal illness. The fact that these things sometimes happen is a source of hope and confidence for us when we face adversity ourselves. But the greatest hope of all is our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave Himself into death and then on the third day rose triumphant from the grave, victorious over the power of sin, death, and the devil. In Christ, our fortunes have been reversed. Joined to our Lord in holy baptism, we are now defined by our Lord's death and resurrection. We have died to sin and are alive in Christ. We walk in newness of life. The treasure of forgiveness and eternal life is ours in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Merciful God, you have sent the promised offspring to crush Satan's head forever by the death of Christ our Savior. As you gave comfort to Adam and Eve, receiving their meager confessions for the sake of your grace and promising deliverance from sin and its curse, so comfort us by the forgiveness of sins and give us hope in the promise of eternal life and your new creation. Lord, in your mercy. Give courage to your church, O Lord, that as we believe, so we also would speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confident hope we have in Him, that we too will be raised and brought into His presence. Embolden us by your Spirit to confess this Christian faith from a lively conscience, that for Christ's sake, grace may extend to more and more people and increase thanksgiving to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, your Son was rejected on earth even by his friends and relatives. Give consolation to all Christians who feel the sword of division brought about by the confession of Christ's truth, especially those who cannot find agreement within their own families on the Word of God from which life itself comes. Assure them that their stand for your truth is necessary. Guard them from seeking a false or easier peace and turn us in every earthly disappointment towards the promise of your eternal and undivided church, triumphant. Lord, in your mercy. 
Almighty God, no kingdom divided against itself can stand, and a house divided must fall. Graciously preserve our nation with its government. Frustrate the work of Satan and the seeds of destruction that he would sow in every place were he not stayed by your gracious hand. Unite our leaders and our people for the common good while leading us to hope in the eternal kingdom that is not of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord God, hear our prayers for your servants who suffer in this earthly tent, especially those we now name silently in our hearts. Do not let them lose heart, but fix their eyes beyond what is transient to the things unseen. By this slight momentary affliction, prepare them for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, when at last you will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, as Satan once overcame our first parents through the eating of the tree's fruit, so overcome him now among us by the fruit of your Son's cross, his body and blood, given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Bless all who commune with repentance and faith, that in the comfort of the gospel they may be cleansed and prepared for eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, what was lost in paradise has been regained by the conquering wounds of your Son, crucified and raised again. In him we are restored as your children and made bold to ask for every need. Hear us for his sake and in his name even Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, adored heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name, sing holy. O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's table. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come. as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come oh, I 
Just as I am, though tossed about, <clears throat> conflict many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O oh, Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am for wretched blind, sight riches healing of the mind, hey, all I need in thee to find, O oh, Lamb of God, I May this holy body and this precious blood strengthen you and keep you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Heart in peace. Amen. O oh Lord, now let your servant depart in heavenly peace. For I have seen the glory your redeeming grace, a light to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill, the glory of your people, your chosen Israel. All glory to the Father, all glory to the Son. All glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning, is now shall ever be. God's triune name resounding, with all eternity. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
Selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Save us from we Salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving you we adore, serving you we adore. You may be seated. Good morning. morning. It's good to be here with you today. It's always, for a pastor at least, it's always a wonderful experience to come to another church and uh, distribute God's gifts to a new group. And also to see how it's a little, it's interesting to see how it's done. Uh, At St. John today, actually, we're going to be using this same order of service. So, but... uh, it will look slightly different, as all churches do. But I'm glad I could be with you here, and I have no really, I don't know any announcements, so. (laughs) Um, But uh, I wish you the Lord's blessings. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.